Next, we talk about the process of deciding how you do your operations, solving the problem of delivering the product or service that you're up against or what you're trying to accomplish. Subway is a good example of this. Think about the systems model we talked about in the last uh, discussion. What we have is, is an inputs, there's a transformation process, and there's outputs. What is it? For a Subway, Subway has all the food behind the counter. They bake their own goods, right? So that's part of the transformation process, but they get the dough. They get the vegetables that are processed and chopped up. They get all the different meats and that sort of thing. They lay them out in front of you. They present the, um, they present the business to the customers as they walk up. Those are inputs. The transformation process is making the sandwich for someone as they walk down and, and pick out what they want, making these customized sandwich. And that sandwich is delivered to a customer at the end. This is the idea of figuring out what to do and how to do it and improving things as you go. Operations of a business, business model, if you will. And it's the sort of thing that we, um, that we want to understand and improve and continually be better. And it's one of the things that we do in management is figure out how to do all of these sorts of things. So what is it that you do when you plan and you design your various operations? Um, first of all, you figure out what is it that we're going to produce? Who are the customers? Uh, what will we use to do this? Um, when you think about Subway, there could have been multiple ways uh, that they would have done this. They could be behind the counter like delis and they make the sandwich without you seeing it. They could uh, have this sort of uh, assembly line process that they have. There's all different ways you can do it. So you figure out how to go about creating this particular process model that everyone conforms to in the organization and that customers get to know and appreciate and expect. And so when they walk in, they too participate in the production because they know what's going to happen. And then to make the product and then deliver them at the end. Understanding and figuring out how one goes about doing this. This is the, the idea of designing and developing your plan. Um, we'll talk about this generally here in a, for a couple of seconds. You want to be thinking about, for example, are your, all your products standardized? Some, some businesses, like old-style fast food, they had a certain kind of hamburger. They had hamburgers and they had cheeseburgers. That's what you buy. You buy French fries. You'd walk in with standard products. You'd just ask for them, and you'd get them. Um, this was like what McDonald's was like before Subway and others came in and, and, um, and made some different, uh, uh, different kind of more of a customized process. Um, other businesses like that have started to adopt a little bit of that, have it your way and those sorts of things. But originally, one of the, the real breakthroughs of the fast food model was there were certain standardized products. You might also have something that's called a modular design, which means that the product or the service is set up so that there's only a certain way that it's done and pieces there can be put together in different ways. Um, when you think about it, if you look at the subway process in a, on a large scale, there's a bit of a modular design in the sense that you have a number of types of breads that can be used to build the sandwich. The breads are a design. You have different kinds and you can decide you want rye or whatever. Now remember, they make that bread also, so it's part of their transformation process, but they only make certain breads. You can't mix um, the rye bread with the whole grain breads or whatever. There's certain ones that you use, and you choose um, one of those designs, and that's what you use to build your sandwich. Um, other organizations or other types of businesses have an even more have a stronger modular design. For example, with a computer, you have certain size screens. You can mix. You might be able to mix a screen with a different amount of memory or the, with different kinds of technology or different keyboard. But by and large, they're modular. And then the final product is uh, something that is uh, called a customization, pure customization. You can kind of see that for the most part in terms of the subway business, the subway model, but it's not completely that because they have that little bit of that modular design I was describing. But, all, but if you think about building someone building a home, that's basically a custom home, um, or is generally more what you think about when you're doing a customization. Someone comes in and does exactly what you ask for, um, and they make the product to meet exactly the customer needs. Now, clearly, Subway leans more towards customization, uh, but then you are limited to the particulars of what, uh, what Subway has to offer, what its, what its modules of service are, the different meats and all of that sort of thing. 
customization in in the extreme can be like a landscaper who finds out what you want or an architect and then brings all those pieces um, to bear on the problem going forward and that's how they might be thinking about it in the next section I'll talk a little bit more about the various elements of planning again staying general but we'll talk about aspects of planning and how these might um, might come together uh, as you think about your business whether it's a manufacturing facility a fast food restaurant um, even a um, like a, a, a salon or something like that a small business or a retail outlet we'll talk more about the particulars of how you what sorts of things you have to make sure you have plans to address so let's